Hi, this is David Giles of Hitex Development Tools with a short presentation on logical assignment issues in unit testing using a worked example with the TESI unit testing tool from Razorcat. When writing C source code, it's important to realize that logical assignments have different testing requirements to normal C source code that you will write. To demonstrate this, have a quick look at the C source code which I have prepared here. Here I have two functions. Uh, this is the first function here, uh, called test function one, and it has two input parameters. They are basically logical terms which have a value of true or false. And if we was to do a uh, assignment such as result equals input one or input two, then we have one line of source code which actually alls the two inputs together. Later on down in the code, we actually log the result of that OR expression in an external function called log event. Um, I also have a, a little index uh, counter which you see here, here index plus plus, which is actually a, a static local variable within the function. So all I'm doing is basically having a logical order of two input parameters which is then being uh, logged. As you can see within this code there are in fact no branches at all, it's just simple straight through code. However, if we was to rewrite the code in a slightly different way, as highlighted in the second function which I have here, test function 2, which again has the same input parameters, input 1 and input 2, and we can rewrite the assignment result equals input 1 or input 2 in a slightly different way. Uh, so we can have if input 1 equals true or input 2 equals true, then the result equals true. So both of these functions perform exactly the same task uh, however, in the second example, uh, we have a conditional statement uh, with a branch depending on whether the outcome is true or false. So the problem we have is that if we use logical assignment in our code, uh, then we have effectively one statement which is the, the same as a branch. So we have a potential problem here, whereas if we use logical assignment in our code, we may have the operation of the uh, equipment changing depending upon the result from that logical assignment. If we used an if statement rather than a logical assignment, it would be quite easy to pick this up with a test tool because we would see that we would have branches uh, from different points within the code and we can use MCDC coverage criteria to ensure that all the branches of the code have been taken. When we only have a single logical assignment in a single line of C source code, it means that uh, the majority of the test tools will see this logical assignment as a single line of code with no branches or no conditional outcomes. Uh, however, for the avionics industry, this is not acceptable. And the concern was first raised and given the name CAS-10. So if you do a search on the internet, you'll see uh, what the CAS-10 uh, concern is all about. For any test tool which you're looking to purchase, it's worth making a note to see whether the logical assignment issue has been addressed. In TESI version 2.9 or later, the cast issue has been addressed, at which I'll show you here now. So I'll create a new module for myself, add module, call it test underscore cast 10, and I'll do right click, properties, add a file. So the file is called cast 10.c, add the include path. So I add the include path for the header files. So now I have the C source code in there, plus all the headers which I need, and I open the module. Tessie will now examine the C source code and list all of the functions that are contained within that one C source file. Okay, so Tessie has finished passing the code and it has correctly identified that there are two functions, test function one and test function two. So if I come up onto the interface, we can see what Tessie has made of this. And we can see that Tessie has correctly identified so there's one input parameter called input 1 and another input parameter called input 2. These are the logical uh, inputs which will have uh, either true or false as input values. We have one return value which obviously is the true or false which is the complete uh, return value from the function call. We've identified one global variable which is actually the static uh, local variable within the function. Um, so obviously Tessie shows it here as a globals which allows us to effectively modify that parameter and also at the top here we have the external function which is log event. I'll create an advanced stub uh, for all the test objects and uh, as you can see here now we'll have 
uh, two additional parameters which will come up in the test data editor. So I'll close this down, click on yes, and we come up onto the right hand side, hit the insert key, create a new test case for ourselves. So double click on the white icon, I'll open the test data editor, put some data in here now. Initially the uh, the index which is just used as a parameter for login, I'll put a nominal value in there of zero and we'll, we'll fill in some um, values uh, for here. So we'll have false as the first input parameter, false as the second input parameter and we know that the return value from the function should also be false and we know that the index um, counter is incremented by one within the function so that changes to one. And also when uh, we call the log event uh, function index is currently zero and we know uh, that the value that it's logging is also false as well. So we've created a very simple test case there. I click on the close icon. Um, I come up to execute the test. So I highlight the razor cat symbol and uh, I'll actually turn on the instrumentation C1, C2 because we're interested to see how Tessie handles this logical assignment within the function. We click on execute. Now Tessie will actually compile and execute the code. And as you can see, Tessie has successfully executed the single test case and the yellow icon has now turned green to indicate that we have a pass. So when I click on the uh, monitoring icon, uh, we come into the Tessie coverage viewer. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we have for this particular test function, 100% um, branch coverage, uh, which is what the C1 suffix indicates. The MCDC coverage, however, only shows 33%, which is rather interesting. So as you can see from the MCDC uh, coverage information, we actually only have 33% MCDC coverage, even though with a single test case we have 100% branch coverage. And the reason for this, of course, is that the logical assignment statement is treated a little bit differently in order to ensure that we in order to ensure that we test this function correctly. So if I highlight the red diamond, you can see in the coverage view window on the right hand side. Uh, you can see we have a test case where input 1 is false and input 2 is false and it was test step or test case number 1 which generated that test condition for us but you see we have two red bars uh, just below that which represent two additional test cases that we require to get 100% MCDC coverage and it's quite obvious when you think about it which two test scenarios these are. The first one is obviously where input 1 is false and input 2 is true and we have another test case which we need to do which is where input 1 is true and because it's a NOR statement we don't really care what uh, the value of input 2 is that we're used. So you can see again by highlighting this red diamond below is the C source code that represents that piece of software so result equals input 1 or input 2. So a single test case gives us 100% branch coverage but it doesn't give us 100% MCDC coverage because this logical assignment has to be treated differently and this was something which the avionics industry had identified as being a potential weakness when testing software so it is very important if you're writing software in accordance with DO178B that you use a test tool that's able to pick out these kind of um, potential uh, problems. If I close this down and uh, now let's take a look at test function 2 and uh, if you remember the C uh, source code was uh, pretty much identical only the logical assignment line had been uh, replaced with uh, an if statement so what I'll do is I'll very simply create a test case for that and we can see how the two compare so I have a global stub here I'll just make it identical to uh, the one which we had um, in the other test scenario and I come up into here click on the insert button have our first white test case so I now need to load it up with test data so I'll put exactly the same test data in as which I had for the previous test case so we start off with index being zero the two input parameters to the function are going to be false the return parameter from the function is also going to be false and index will be incremented by one and the log function will have the same parameters as what we had earlier which is index of zero and uh, the result value which is false as well so I close this down so I come up onto the razor cat symbol, generate the driver, click on run. I'll keep the instrumentation turned on so we can see how uh, Tessie will show this visually different from the previous example. The test has successfully executed and uh, the yellow icon has turned to green. If I click on the monitoring icon and you can see we have a slightly different drawing to represent the different uh, source code. You'll notice now when I hover over the 
branch coverage and MCDC coverage information you can see we have 50% branch coverage and 33% MCDC coverage and when I click on the red diamond the same decision table that we had in the previous example is brought up and you can see that we have a single test case which satisfies the first of three of the required test cases that we need to do to get MCDC coverage and again when I highlight the diamond you can see this uh, the source code to which it is applicable is highlighted below and if I highlight the green path uh, you can see this represents uh, this part of the code here so it's actually taken the false and uh, the true one is not yet executed yet okay I close that down and that completes the brief introduction to logical assignments and potential issues with using logical assignments when writing software if you are going to use logical assignment in your C source code then it's imperative that you choose a test tool that is able to correctly distinguish this from any other single line of source code which you have. A logical assignment should be treated the same as if it's a conditional branch instruction. For those customers in UK and Ireland you can find additional information on Tessie the unit testing tool from Razorcat on the Hitex website www.hitex.co.uk or please contact myself David Giles on djiles at hitex.co.uk for other regions, please contact my colleague Frank Buchner on frank.buchner at hitex.de.